Linus Pauling stumbles onto the Alpha Helix and a Nobel Prize. As high technology continues to transform the modern biochemical laboratory, it is interesting to reflect on Linus Pauling's discovery of the Alpha Helix. It involved only a piece of paper, a pencil, scissors, and a sick Linus Pauling who had tired of reading detective stories. The story is told in the excellent book, The Eighth Day of Creation, by Horace Freeland Judson. From the spring of 1948 through the spring of 1951, rivalry sputtered and blazed between Pauling's lab and Sir Lawrence Bragg's over protein. The prize was to propose and verify in nature a general three-dimensional structure for the polypeptide chain. Pauling was working up from the simpler structures of components. In January 1948, he went to Oxford as a visiting professor for two terms to lecture on the chemical bond and on molecular structure and biological specificity. In Oxford, it was April, I believe, said Pauling. I caught cold. I went to bed and read detective stories for a day and got bored and thought, why don't I have a crack at that problem of alpha keratin? Confined and still fingering the polypeptide chain in his mind, Pauling called for paper, pencil, and a straight edge and attempted to reduce the problem to an almost Euclidean purity. I took a sheet of paper. I still had the sheet of paper and drew, rather roughly, the way that I thought a polypeptide chain would look if it were spread out into a plane. The repetitious herringbone of the chain he could stretch across the paper is simply as putting in lengths and bond angles from memory. He knew that the peptide bond at the carbon to nitrogen link was always rigid. And this meant that the chain could turn corners only at the alpha carbons. I increased the paper in parallel creases through the alpha carbon atoms so that I could bend it and make the bonds to the alpha carbons along the chain have tetrahedral value. And then I looked to see if I could form hydrogen bonds from one part of the chain to the next. He saw that if he folded the strip like a chain of paper dolls into a helix and if he got the pitch of the screw right, Hydrogen bonds could be shown to form NHOC, three or four knuckles apart along the backbone, holding the helix in shape. After several tries changing the angle of the parallel creases in order to adjust the pitch of the helix, he found one where the hydrogen bonds would drop into place, connecting the turns as straight lines of the right length. He had his model. 